This lesson covers enabling encrypted file system in an organization. And the reality is by default, if you do absolutely no action, EFS is just available. Users can go to their data, they can right click, they can go to properties, and under advanced, they could say encrypt this contents. Now this is actually warning you of certain types of application when they edit the data, they create temporary files. So if I only encrypt the data file and not the folder that file sits in, if there is a temporary file created, well that temporary file wouldn't be encrypted. Let's say the machine got shut down. It didn't close properly or that application just didn't delete its temporary files correctly. You might be left with sensitive information in an unencrypted state in that application's temporary data. So this is warning you, hey, if you want to encrypt data, you probably should encrypt the folder as well. I'm going to say no. And that's it. Nothing else. I could encrypt the data. Now behind the scenes, if this is a member of a domain and the domain has a PKI, a public key infrastructure implementation, such as Active Directory Certificate Services, what it actually did is it went and spoke to my certificate authority and requested an encrypted file system certificate, which is what you can see here. What you're looking at right here is both the private and the public key of that certificate. And it's very, very important for your end users if they do start encrypting data to back this up. So you need to go to all tasks, export. And as part of the export, it's gonna say, do you wanna back up the private key? Definitely need to do that because this data is effectively encrypted using that private key. So if the users lost their private key, they'd have no way to access it. In reality, it's a bit more complicated than that. It is using that private public key and a symmetric key as well. But essentially, if you lose access to the private key, there is no way to decrypt these files. So if users just went around and started encrypting data, they need to make sure they know to back up their private keys in case something happened to this key. Now, if the users are using roaming profiles, then these keys are actually backed up as part of the Active Directory anyway, without doing any manual action. But there's an issue here. So users without doing anything else will automatically get a certificate. And if they're not part of a domain or if there isn't a PKI infrastructure, it will just create a locally self-signed certificate. But what if that user left? What if the user left and encrypted huge amounts of data or they do lose their private key? Suddenly you've got huge amounts of corporate asset that you can no longer access. And by the way, if you're wondering why this is a different color, under the view ribbon, under options, go to view, and down the bottom here, show encrypted or compressed NTFS files in color. But as an organization, how do I stop the risk of losing access to data that users may encrypt? We need to have things called domain recovery agents. And a domain recovery agent is basically injected into every file that is encrypted to enable me in an emergency to be able to go in and recover that data. By default in Active Directory, as part of your default domain policy, so if I edit this policy, under policies, Windows settings, security settings, public key policies, encrypted file system, it actually creates a default file recovery agent. Now this is actually created the first time an administrator logs on to the first domain controller in a domain. But here's the challenge. This is the default certificate. It was never backed up anywhere. This was just created for you automatically. And if you still have the first DC you ever created, then that certificate is sitting on that box. But if you never backed it up, if you don't have that anymore, you no longer have this certificate, you don't have the private key, which means it's basically useless. So what you really wanna do is add your own certificates to Active Directory. Now firstly, before I actually make that change, I actually want to show you what this file looks like right now. So if I open a command prompt and go to my documents, I can see I have my test data doc file, this file right here. What I can actually do is use the cipher command to view details about that file. So if I do slash C, this is going to show me. So this file, John can decrypt it. So that's me. And there's my certificate thumbprint. Additionally, the administrator of the domain can use his recovery certificate. And this is that certificate that's described right here. 
But the reality is this domain controller has long gone. I have no access to this anymore. So I can manually request a new recovery certificate. If I didn't have a PKI, I can actually use the cipher command that I just showed you, and I can use the slash R switch. So cipher slash R colon then a file name will save a recovery certificate to that location. However, because I have a PKI environment, what I can actually do is I can right click and I can just say create data recovery agent. And it automatically connected to my certificate authority and created a new recovery agent. This is a certificates view for my current logged on user, which is administrator. And you can add this by just opening up an MMC. So you would start a brand new MMC instance, then file add remove snapping. Certificates, click add, and it would be for your user account because I want to look at my certificates. This is what I've done over here. If I refresh, we'll see it actually automatically now has that recovery type certificate. And at this point, if I'm not using roaming profiles, I should absolutely export this out. Because again, as an administrator, I need to make sure I keep this private key safe. But now this group policy has added this recovery agent. So at this point, I could refresh group policy on this client machine. So it's going to go and check and find those new recovery agents. So it's completed the computer policy update. Now, if I look at the file again, nothing will have changed. Because to change that recovery agent, I actually have to open the document up and save it again. By saving it, it rechecks the recovery agents. And now I see two of them, because remember I added that new recovery agent. And the reality is I don't even want this original one anymore. So I'm actually going to delete that completely. And then the next time we update group policy and the next time I save the data, I would only use this. And this is the key piece you must perform in your environment before you start allowing encrypted file system. Because if you don't, and users just start using EFS, and you don't have something to back up their private keys, you're not using roaming profiles, and you don't have a domain recovery agent, you have huge amounts of risk of losing data. So certainly at this point, I would want to go in and export out my private key. If you're not ready, if you haven't got good policies in place around encrypted file system, you can turn it off for the domain. So if you right click on this node and do properties, I can say, don't allow it. And this is absolutely what you should do if you're not ready, if you don't have recovery agents configured right now, just don't allow it until you've got the right policies in place to actually be able to control encrypted file system. This concludes the lesson on enabling encrypted file system in an organization.